How's it going guys? Up here in the Franklins. Um, been thinking of mulling this over for a while. Wanted to make a video on arid environment slash desert observation posts, LUPs, lie, lie up, lay up, lie up point. Um, and just how, not how hard, but some of the things you have to do in an arid environment where there's not a lot of vegetation, there's not a lot of, not brush, but um, fa uh, flora that you can use to your advantage to making a OP or LUP that you would be able to make in a basically anything other than, I mean, mountainous like rock mountain, anything other than this, jungle, woodland, Ton, even tundra like you can dig down you'll see th there's not a lot you can do here in the way of making an LUP now I'm gonna go over I'm just this is gonna be a spliced up video I'm gonna go over the gear that I brought I'm gonna show it being made kind of um, you know what what it takes slash you know the what I have to, to, to make this LUP right um, so here's the here's the background this is this is not a necessarily a military context this is not necessarily um, with a, with a lot of support um, I don't want to go into like imagination land so let's just say towards the road is what I'm observing and isn't mine and behind where my OP LUP is the, the mountains behind that come into it that way, right? That is mine. So I have come through friendly territory. I am in disputed territory, looking at unfriendly territory. The the quote unquote objective of this is to uh, to observe the MSR, the the main supply route. It's a road right here. It's just what I'm look. I'm facing towards a road, and that's that's the objective. So I didn't I didn't come through hundreds of miles, you know, 50 miles of enemy territory to set up an OP on something. Came through friendly territory to set up an OP to look at the enemy territory to get an idea of what I'm, what I'm looking at. All right, that's, that's the, the, um, the whatnot behind it. I don't have air support. I don't have a radio. I don't have comms to do that. I am here solely as a observe what I see, write it down for however however long I'm supposed to be here and then pack up and leave okay so that's that's the that's the background that's the the thought process behind this and this is this is yes this isn't a civilian role but isn't that what we're all ow cactus foot um isn't that all what we're about right now the modern minute man to armed civilians small unit tactics, learning all that kind of stuff, whether you've been in the military or not. So here's, for me, scenario, applicable, learning how to make an OP. And I can tell you, I've, I drove down and back. You can't see where I am. Can't see where I am from the road. You can see the road just fine. So, and we're not talking about fucking constant enemy patrols, um, helicopters or planes flying over looking for you that's not what we're, we're just here to observe they don't know we're here we're just here to look and, and count take take account of what's what's going on all right so let's uh let's get into it all right so here's the, the kit i brought to set it up to make it i have my veil my uh, my sniper veil, my scrim, my veil. I have my E tool, which ain't gonna do much, but I got that anyway. I have my poncho, which I'm going to be using as a ground tarp because of how rocky it is. My note taking material. I also brought my multi tool and my trip wire. If you wanted to send up there, you can see some. Uh, you can see some runs around here. There's a wash right next to me. 
You can set up some trip wires between brushes, brushes and whatnot. I obviously am a civilian, so I don't have grenades, I don't have claymores, but you can set this up enough to as a delay behind you, right? I got that, I got my binos. I've got my NVGs for nighttime observation. And then um, you got, I got my glow sticks and my VS-17 panel. Because what did I say? I said the area behind me is friendly, which means I might want to mark my position behind me. People coming up from the rear, potentially. Um, so that I brought those just as signaling if, if need be. So there's that. Um, and I brought this. It's this new um, Soul Escape Bivy. So it's Bivy that is this OD green. It's like an emergency Bivy. It's OD green on the outside, right? And it's reflective on the inside. Where's the top? It's this reflective. So there's your thermal capabilities, right? So, brought that. So that's the, that's the kit I brought. I got my pack. It's got water, food in it. I got my belt kit and my chest rig. Um, so yeah. So let's, let's get this, let's get this set up and then I'll, I'll um, you know, film that. So, um, so yeah, so I forgot when I started to, to show, right? So I pulled back the dirt and rocks, put my poncho down to cover the ground, night vision, um, notebook, binos, veil in front, obviously I took the net down so you could see, and then my pack with the pack cover at that end, I'm wearing my belt kit right now, belt kit would be along there, rifle facing down towards the road. So yeah, so that's what it looks like inside without the cover on top. There you go. Looking directly at the road, there is some obstruction by the brush, but in a seated position or um, kind of like half laying, you have you have view of the of the highway, um, and you can see the vehicles driving. What is this? East, this road east to west? So you can see them driving east to west. Um, so yeah, so here's the inside view. Uh, I have... I have my pack. My pack cover facing forward a little bit. Um, you can use that to use as a pillow. To you lean up against. Um, plus my food and more of my hydration is right there. I have my NVGs. Right here next to my my binoculars, which you know just hold on, sorry, just boop right up out, and then hat right there, and then I have my belt kit laid long lengthways like this, with my rifle facing down down obviously down range, um, with my scope rings um my scope rings are open right now because they look like there was somebody over there i can't tell but um front scope ring closed back scope ring open i have it set on five it's one and eight so i have it set on five for now because i have my binos and then right be and i have this the bell kit set up right here because it has hydration easily accessible right here um and extra ammunition for
I guess you can say it works. <laughs> At least from the rear. <laughs> That's what she said. Interesting. All right, let me finish this up. Anyway, as I was saying, bell kit, extra ammo, water, food right here. Um, I keep my pattern 83, so I have my bell kit and my pattern 83 on me um, as my gear. I keep my pattern 83 on me at all times. That way, if I do have to disperse quickly, I can just grab my rifle and I have like I've done in my three line, because I basically have my three line with me right now. I've done in my three line video um, that I can basically, um, it's basically like the pattern 83 vest is basically like a survival vest. So yeah, so there you go. So that's the inside. That guy's making a video too. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. He's got like a GoPro. I'm laying outside my, because I was moving around it and he was up over the ridge. Well, wish I had gotten that on video. He literally, I was laying, here's my, here's my OP. I was literally laying right there. He came down that road and there's a trail that actually comes right along here. It's a little foot trail. I thought it was more of a cow trail because I'd never seen anybody going along this trail. He drove up, so here, I'm gonna stand right here. He drove up to right there, which is less than 20 feet away from me. And I am just laying here with my bra stroke and my DPM. And he stops, because he pulled out his phone to look at his phone. And he stops and I'm like, you looking for a good trail? You should have seen the look on his face. It, it was, <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. You should have seen the look on his face. I would say the OP works. All right, so let me finish making this video so I can get the hell out of here. It's fucking hot. Here's the back of the OP facing the road. You have a power line too on the other side of the road. Um, so there's the OP. The majority of the fish, the fishnet, <laughs> the majority of the camouflage net is in the back. These are creosote bushes around it right here. And in front is a dead mesquite bush. Which is nice because I can I can use the thorns to hook up um, the camouflage net and my veil. So it, it just enough. Where's my finger? Just enough sitting space right there. And lay that way. Can't really see the road when you're laying, but as a one man thing, whatnot, whatever. Um, so you sit right there. Got all my gear in the front. So here, let's go. Um, let's go maybe like 50 yards behind it. All right, so yeah, we're about 30, 35 yards behind it. Um, we're gonna go a little farther. But there you can see the, the camouflage um, net moving in the breeze. Yes, it is brighter than the colors around it, but as you can see, the portion of the wash next to it and the dead grass around it it may not be a perfect blend, but like I said, with the guy, he didn't see until he was up on it, okay? So unless you're looking for it, you dig what I'm saying? So let's go back a little farther. And there you go, from this distance, it's not very noticeable. It is lighter, but like I said, if you don't know what you're looking for, you see the, the wash, the dirt area right there, it's right next to it just looks like another bit of sand so there you go that's it from the back so here it is from the front can't really you can see some of the light colors yeah the netting is moving in the wind but you can also see i put the veil and there's the gap like you saw when i showed you inside there's the gap where i can look out of that covers just in front of my body um so there you go so there's the direct front of maybe five yards away from it here we are about 35 yards from it um you can obviously see the bush see a little bit of the netting but even from this distance it just looks like a tan line so there you go from the front now like i said from the road here let me turn to the road 
So here's facing towards the road, right? And you can see cars going by. Now, there's this good section. I'd say that's maybe an eighth of a mile, maybe. Eighth of a mile long section, maybe a little less to be able to see it. And, you know, like I said, it's all nominal on what you're doing. What are you observing for? Are you just observing traffic? Or are you observing for military vehicles? Or are you observing for troop movements on foot? Things like that. So, you know, it might not be the best view, but, you know, you don't want to get too close to the road because obviously the farther away, it's harder to see you. But, um, you know, there's some mesquite bushes over here. I just didn't like the spot where it was at. So, I wanted to stay closer to the edge of that wash because it's also a good drop off. Hold on. Where it's set up is on the edge of a wash. So if I had to E and E really quickly, unlike that bush that I just pointed to where it's all flat behind it and then you have to get to the wash. Where I set up is right on the edge of the wash. Boom, slide down, follow. Boom, slide down, follow the wash up and out, right? So there you go. So that's the front and the road. All right, guys. Well, there you go. Front, back, inside. Little, uh, little spook with the, with the, well, one of those one wheel things. Uh, there you go. There shows people's observa um, obser um, the powers of observation, but then being observant of the environment around you, right? I'm laying right here, and he's in the trail 20 feet right there. Didn't see me until I said something. Should I have said something? Should I have not? Doesn't really matter, because public land, I can be out here, whatever. Um, but, yeah, so, simple. This And this is all you can do, because you could, yeah, have a machete and chop up creosote bushes and make, like, a creosote bush, but, um, like a creosote bush kind of fence front around it but that's not going to work you want to know why that's not going to work because the creosote bushes are ones onesies yeah they may be close to each other but when you clump them all together that looks out of place more out of place than some cam you know the camouflage net so you know clear out the the dirt and debris put down the my poncho as a ground tarp camouflage net over um Veil in the front, got my gear under the camouflage net with me. I'm right here at the edge of this wash, so if something happens, I can just scoot out, grab a keep, got my vest on me, right? Just grab my rifle, scoot out, run up the, you know, uh, E and E up the wash, right? So yeah, so there you go. So, like, like I was saying, here in the here in the desert, in the in an arid environment, it is very hard to make a traditional traditional conventional op this isn't the jungle this isn't the thick bush this isn't a temperate woodland area this is there's nothing this is creosote bushes with dead mesquite bushes and rock you can dig down but the issue is there's ants on most places around here um, and with it raining recently the ground isn't soft the rain soaks Sun dries the top, top six inches of soil are like, kind of like concrete once you get into the dust and the, the rocks, making it a pain. Plus, where are you gonna put all that dirt? One, two, when you're digging, it makes a fucking dust, um, little dust cloud. Boom, gives away your position right away. Um, the only reason I did that with this is because of the, uh, the rocks and the broken um, mesquite with the thorns. So I just wanted to clear those out I put my uh, poncho down, but you don't have to do that. But that's it. That's literally it, guys. That's that's all you really got out here. Um, other than just laying under a big bush, but bigger bushes out here draw people's eye. You see a bigger mesquite bush, you're gonna be like, oh, you're big. I I do it. I'm driving down now. I'm observant, so maybe it's just me and my thought process with doing this shit. But I see a bigger bush. It's like, oh, that'd be nice to be under somebody's looking for you oh that looks like a good place as opposed to a fucking dead bush right so there you go um yeah so that's just you know and I'm, I'm i'm out here i'm glad 
I pick I got I got this one in eight optic now. Um, it makes observing a hell of a lot easier. It's better. It is. It is much better than the L can, which was what a fixed uh, three four three six. Um, it's a hell of a lot better. So, you know, getting that I got that from I got that from Brownells. It's literally the only thing with this rifle that's not Brownells is the lower receiver. So, um, you know, yeah, and the flashlight. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Um, hope you guys like that. I hope you kind of got to see what I was talking about. The, you know, um, from a distance, right? How it looks from a distance. It doesn't necessarily matter how it looks up close if you're maintaining your distance, right? So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Um, we'll do another video.